Let's get you now back to the courtroom. It's a video deposition. Kate James, that's Amber Heard's former personal assistant, is the individual being questioned. Let's listen in. Answer. I sent a message saying Happy New Year to a lot of my friends. Question. Over text? Answer. Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. You can continue the video. I'll men assist you in preparing your witness statements for the UK litigation. No. Did you exchange drafts of those statements with Mr. No. Warren? No. Who did you send those drafts to? Shillings. Is every word in those witness statements words that you drafted? Yes. Did anyone provide edits to those witness statements for your consideration? I'm very good at my own editing, I can assure you. That didn't answer my question. Did anyone else provide edits to those witness statements oh. for your Now, you've spoken with Mr. Depp since he and Amber got divorced, correct? Correct. When was the last time you spoke with him? You can answer. I don't recall. Was it within the past year? No. In any day prior to today, have you exchanged text messages with Mr. Depp? Yes. When was the last time approximately that you exchanged text messages with Mr. Depp? Uh, I would say 2016. Oh, yeah, I think 2016, but it's a long time ago. When was the last time you spoke with Amber Heard? I don't recall. Was it shortly after your employment with her ended in 2015? No. Was it after that? No. You, have you spoken with her to the best of your recollection or communicated with her in any way in the past, say, five years? No. When were you, um, when were you hired by Ms. Hurd? In 2012. Um, how did you meet her? Her sister put an ad through, uh, you know, a recruitment uh, system I use in my field. Um, take me through your, the chronology of, um, well, let me ask you this way. When did you, would, would you describe your, your work for Ms. Hurd as a personal assistant? Is that what you'd call your job title? Yes. When did you first start working as a personal assistant? In 1999. How many, for how many people have you served as a personal assistant? Maybe uh, six. Since you, um, left Ms. Hurd's employment in 2015, for how many people have you served as a personal assistant? One, that's the same person I work for to this day. I've been with him for six and a half years. Ms. James, have you had any other jobs since, other than this, this personal assistant job since you left Ms. Hurd's employment? No. Now, your work for Ms. Hurd was, was it part-time or full-time? It started as part-time and became full-time. When did you change from part-time to full-time? I don't recall. What were your job duties? Too many to mention. Give me your best summary of what your job duties were, please. Mm -hmm. is, is this relevant? Okay, so let's see. I mean, if you are ready for a really, really long time of me explaining all of the details, that's fine. It's everything you could possibly do to run someone's life, okay? So it is grocery shopping. It is taking care of admin. It is running errands. It is getting the car fixed. It is getting the dogs groomed. It is picking up flowers. It is dealing with the decorator. It is dealing with the housekeeper. It is going on and on and on and on, and it goes on every single day. 
arranging travel, dealing with all of the surplus staff around the travel, booking all the greeters, dealing with the changing of travel, okay, liaising with people that she's working with on films, updating her calendar accordingly. Uh, liaising with the people on set every single day to update her calendar to ensure that she knows what scene she's doing each day, what her call time is. Or every day it's something different. But it's a lot, yeah. it's a myriad, a myriad of things that go across the board daily. You were paid for that work, correct? Very poorly. What were you paid? Was it fifteen hundred dollars a week to start? Are you kidding? Is that what it was? No, I wish. My God, no, it was not. She paid me twenty-five dollars an hour to start off with, and she finally agreed after screaming abuse at me that she would pay me fifty thousand dollars a year once I went to full time. And this was after me working for well over ten years as a personal assistant. So it was very insulting to me, but. I did it anyway because I had grandfathered in the ability to pick up my son from school and bring him to work with me at three o'clock. And you could have left Ms. Hurd's employment at any time, correct? Yes. You were based in Los Angeles when you were providing personal assistance services to Ms. Hurd, right? I have always lived in Los Angeles since 1999. So you didn't travel with Miss Heard when she was out of town, correct? That was another part of our agreement that I wouldn't travel with her because of my child. And she was out of town quite a bit, right? Not really. Not really? How many weeks a year would you estimate Miss Heard was out of town while you worked for her? Well, you're talking uh, almost 10 years ago, so I can't tell you quite honestly. But when she was out of town, you wouldn't see, um, I, you, you, you never traveled with her, right? No. How much did you see uh, Mr. Depp over the course of your employment with Ms. Heard? Regularly. How many times? Well, obviously you didn't see him when he was out of town, right? No. When he was in town, was it, would you see him daily, weekly, monthly? What, what would you estimate? Uh, there is no rhyme or reason to to the to answer that question. Now, you never witnessed any violence between Miss Heard or Mr. Depp, right? No. And Miss Heard never told you that she had been violent to Mr. Depp, correct? No. You had knowledge that um, Miss Heard and Mr. Depp had arguments, correct? No. Ms. Hurd never told you that she had, and Mr. Depp had had arguments? Occasionally she'd send a text message complaining about her mental state, but it was, was never clear exactly what was going on. It was okay, so you never... It was, I remember she would text me complaining uh, about her mental state and that was about it. I don't have any of the text messages, so it's hard to remember. Do you recall hearing anything about uh, an alleged incident between Amber and Johnny on a flight from Boston to LA around this time frame. Like I said, I remember that day very well. And and um, to, to, to follow up on that, I, I'm not asking just about what Amber may have told you. I'm just trying to drill down generally to what you may have heard, whether from Amber or Johnny or anyone about that. Does that make sense? So can you tell us what do you remember hearing about that flight or what happened or didn't happen on that flight from Boston to LA? I don't know. Sitting here today, you don't remember anything that you heard about that? I don't know. I wasn't on the plane. I just know what happened afterwards. Okay, when she asked me yeah. to come meet her at the shuttle. Did you think to ask her if she was okay? 
You know, I probably did because that's my role to play a caregiver. That's all I can imagine. So what do you remember about this day um, that you alluded to earlier? Mostly my surprise that they went to the Chateau Marmont because Amber had an apartment of her own in West Hollywood that was like completely set up and available to her. So uh, that was my biggest confusion. Like, why did she go to the Chateau? And then she asked me to get her bathing suit. I remember that. So I had to go to her apartment to get her bathing suit, which again, seems strange to me. And then um, I, what also seems strange is when I got there, she had a bunch of friends with her. And it's originally, it, I thought she was alone. Did, um, when you refer to Amber's apartment, are you referring to the apartment on Orange Avenue? Yes, yeah. And isn't it true that Mr. Depp would spend time in that apartment with Amber time to time, correct? Well, I don't really know what the question is in relation to, but he wasn't there at that time, if that's what you're referring to. Yeah, no, that's not my question. My question was just over the course of your employment, you have knowledge of Mr. Depp spending time at that Orange Avenue apartment, they spent right? spent time there and at his residences. I would go around different places, yeah. Were you concerned about Miss Heard and her well-being on this day? No, because it had become a pattern with her, and so I was merely placating her, I would say, and especially when I saw she was there with about four or five girlfriends and basically having fun. Enjoying each other down by the pool. That's why she needed a swimsuit. And then they proceeded to hang there all day drinking uh, while I sat around waiting um, with my son. Actually, I think it was a Sunday that day, I remember. We had to wait all day and while they just hung around drinking by the pool. And then uh, finally I went home and finally she went back to her apartment. And then she wanted me to go back and pack her bag for her at about 10 o'clock at night on Sunday. And I said, I couldn't go by that point. I'd already spent the whole day sitting there. So I said, I couldn't go and pack her bag because it, I'd already put my son to bed and she was very angry about that. I remember that. Okay, so let's, so when you asked her if she was okay, you didn't actually care if she was okay. You said you were just placating her, right? It was a standard, standard, procedure at this point she was a very dramatic person so you you didn't actually think that there was anything um that that, that amber was actually upset correct as i said it just didn't make sense that she went to the shuttle instead of going home that that was the first red flag for me that day you know? so so you so you you came to the conclusion that day that any she actually wasn't upset is that what you're saying it's too much. I mean, I already answered once. What I'm asking is, hey, did you did you come to the conclusion that there was nothing wrong with Miss Heard that day and that she wasn't actually upset? I don't know how to answer. I mean, it's such a strange question. <clears throat> like they said, you already asked me and I already answered. Kate James, former personal assistant to Amber Heard, will uh, have more right after this. Stay with us, need a break. Are you need all on your phone? Welcome back right now. Kate James, Amber Heard's former personal assistant, uh, has was interviewed on a video deposition earlier, and they're playing it now for the courtroom. And we got a good idea now why Johnny Depp's team wanted her to be heard from. Let's go back. Here we go. When she was alone in New York City, and she was crying, walking around the street, crying. And he wasn't there, she was alone, but I said to him she needed to go inside because I was worried that the paparazzi might take a photo of her and she was in a very dysregulated state. And so just out of kindness, I, I said to her it was better if she went inside rather than walking around crying in public. Uh, I remember that, but I don't remember exactly when that was. It might have been 2012 or 2013. Um, as the... Um, as the job went on, we called each other less and less and did mostly text messaging. It was all text messaging we did. Did you, um, did you ever believe that Mr. mistreated her? 
No. So, and why not? Just never any evidence of it at all. I was there almost daily, in, uh, both at her place and then eventually at uh, his place in West Hollywood and then ultimately at the, the lofts downtown. It was a daily basis experience, morning, noon, night, all days of the week. So, you know, I mean, I never once saw any evidence of anything. Did Miss Hurt ever tell you that Johnny had hit her? No. Did he ever tell you? Did she ever tell you that Johnny had pulled her hair or pushed her? No. Well, let me ask it a little bit differently. You never believed Miss Hurd that Mr. Depp had mistreated her. Is that correct? At the time or after? I never believed it. In what? context are you talking about during during my employ or afterward during, during your no never and there was never any damage to the apartment that i witnessed there was never any aftermath of anything ever that i ever saw now you of course have no personal knowledge one way or the other whether um johnny was abusive to her correct Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true because if it was true, I would have seen the damage, even if I wasn't physically present in the moment of, of these alleged arguments. And what's your basis for that statement? Well, if someone's been beaten, there's generally physical evidence. So your testimony is that if, there's, if, if there was no physical evidence that you observed, then it couldn't have happened the domestic violence by Johnny toward Amber. Is that your testimony? No. Well, I'm trying to, to understand what your testimony is. Um, maybe you could clarify for me, Ms. James. Um, is, is your testimony that... Um, it never saw firsthand evidence of Johnny being violent to Amber that it couldn't have happened. That's not what I said. You're trying to put words into my mouth. I don't appreciate that. Can you pull up the document that is, um, it, well, let me see what it ends with here. Um, DEP 11432, please. Sean, is it four on the screen? Right, can we pause for a moment? I'll direct your attention to the. Um, okay. This is this is a document that um, we're just looking for the corresponding trial exhibit. All right, they're pushing the uh, pause button on the video deposition being played for the jury while they um, get a uh, uh, piece of evidence pulled up so they can put it up for the jury on the side. Andrew Mishlov and Maria Barlow still with us. This is quite the witness, Andrew. Uh, your thoughts? She's not a very likable person, is she? She has a lot of resentment. You said that, I mean. The question is, yeah, I know, that's what I saw. The, the question is, why is she resentful? Is her resentment legitimate? Was she, or, or is she just a resentful person? Uh, that's the big question. She clearly no longer has any affection, if she ever did, for Amber Heard. All right, let's listen in. Looks like they're um, discussing some law. Oh, now it's a sidebar. All right, now they're going to a sidebar. The judge wanted to take a look at this um, document. Maria, what's your thought about, about this witness? Obviously, it's a little bit of attitude towards the process if, and, and towards her former employer, Ms. Hurd. Funny enough, I like this witness. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh because I like this witness. She seems like, she doesn't seem to me like she's necessarily um, resentful, bitter. She seems like she's upset because she stayed in a job basically running someone's life for very little pay. 
And now that she's done with that person, she's moved on with her life. She's being drugged back into this life with these people and talking about these experiences that she can't really remember because they're so long ago. And she dealt with them day in and day out. And she really just sounds, to me, she sounded like she just wants to be done with these people. She wants this to be over. She never wants to look back at them. I I read something totally different out of her. And I also read that she's kind of upset that she was paid, she was not paid very well. When he asked her, well, how much were you paid? 1500 a week, she's, I wish. And, and I think that she feels a little bit bitter about how much she was paid and how much work she had to do. And she just wants to be done. She yeah, just wants to be done with them. Definitely gives a, a, a sort of a, a different look to that lifestyle. Um, being the personal assistant, standing there watching the other people enjoy their lifestyle and just being at the beck and call of an individual's every whim, um, sort of, it uh, de-romanticizes it pretty quickly. Um, and Andrew, that's part of the equation here for the defense too, because um, Johnny Depp is being, um, and will be over the course of the next five weeks, portrayed as an out of control, spoiled, drunken um, celebrity. Well, they're po- they're accomplishing the same thing with Amber Heard, are they not? Or at least they want to at the end of the day. I think they certainly are, despite the fact that I didn't like Ms. James <laughs> that much. Uh, her testimony was effective. The story about Amber Heard going and hanging out with her friends at the pool at the Chateau Marmont and spending a Sunday afternoon drinking after she was supposedly abused, uh, I think is very damaging to Amber Heard. Yeah. Let's do this. They're still um, up at the sidebar. We'll slip in a break and get more of this fascinating testimony from the former assistant, personal assistant. Her name is Kate James. We'll hear more from her next. One, three. Welcome back. Let's get you back into court. Kate James, Amber Heard's former personal assistant. The video testimony uh, is being played for the jury. This is a deposition. Let's go back in. When I get back, I'll come over for a spot of purple. Purple means come over for a drink of wine, right? I don't know. That's what you understood it to mean, correct? I don't know. Lucian, can you pull up the document um, labeled UK Trial Day 7, James Testimony, please? And Ms. James, you remember giving testimony in the trial in the UK, right? Uh, well, there'd be something wrong with me if I didn't. And in I that, need order in the court. When you gave that testimony, you. you gave it under oath, correct? Yes. Um, Lucian, can you please go to page 39 of the PDF? And can you please blow up um, the page that uh, is labeled 1221? And on line seven, um, Ms. James, is it, am I reading this right that you were asked the question and he is inviting you over for a spot of purple. What is that? Yes, is your answer. Question, what did you understand? And you answered red wine, I imagine. Do you see that? Yeah, I do remember that. Remember giving that testimony? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is it your understanding that um, Mr. Depp was inviting you over for um, for wine um, at some point after he split up from Miss Heard? And just speculation. Did you go? Uh, did you meet up with Mr. Depp um, for red wine around the time period of this text on August thirteenth, twenty sixteen? I did meet up with him, but we did not drink red wine, no. Was anyone else present for that meeting? No. When he said, come over for a spot of purple and we'll fix her flabby ass, you understood him to be referring to Miss Hurt when he um, said, we'll fix her flabby ass, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't for me to speculate what he, what he was referring to. And uh, I'm not asking for you to speculate what he was referring to. I'm asking for your your understanding was that he was talking to Ms. Heard, correct? You can answer. 
there isn't an answer. I mean, this is the way he writes. It's very random and you don't sort of question it. Okay, it's just the way he writes. He writes in a very abstract way. Okay, um, Lucian, if you can just pull up the, the, the prior testimony that we just looked at. Ms. James, um, isn't it true that um, on line 12 of page 1221, you were asked the question, red wine, and not only to come over for a spot of purple, but to fix her flabby ass. That was about misheard, was it not? And on line 14, you answered, yes, yes. Do you see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you, you did understand this to be referring to Ms. Hurd, correct? No. I'm sorry, you said no? Just trying to be agreeable in the in the court, having no clue what on earth is going on. So there you go. I have no clue. Was that answer in the court truthful or just agreeable? Just being agreeable. So it wasn't truthful? You can answer. I don't have an answer for you, Mr. Rottenborn. What did you and Mr. Depp talk about at that meeting that you recall? I don't recall details. Just tell me generally everything you recall. It's too long ago, Mr. Rottenborn. I don't recall. Do you recall anything? No. Where was the meeting? At his residence in uh, West Hollywood. Is that his um, residence? What, I'm sorry? In West Hollywood. What time of day? Um, about 3 p.m. Um, so you recall the time of day, but you don't recall anything you discussed? Well, I'm just saying, I know it was in the afternoon because it was after I picked my son up from school because my son went to swim in the pool with the security guards watching him while I went and had a brief conversation with Mr. Depp. That's the only reason I remember the time. Did you talk about Miss Heard? Yes. What did what did you discuss about Miss Heard? Uh, and like I said, I don't recall the details. Well, I'm I'm just a little confused because you just testified you didn't remember anything, but now you remember that you did talk about Miss Heard. So I'm, the, what I'm trying to get is everything you remember about the conversation. Well, you've got to understand, Mr. Rottenborn, the, the mutual um, connection between Mr. Depp and myself is, in fact, Mr. Hurt, Ms. Heard. So inevitably, that is going to be part of the conversation. That's all I remember. Okay? Do you remember anything else about that conversation with Mr. Depp? No. Have you seen Mr. Depp since that conversation? No. Now, um, what's your... Just describe generally your educational background, please. I completed high school and then I went straight into becoming a veterinary nurse when I left the school, left school, which I did for approximately three to four years before I left Australia. Do you have any sort of specialized training in veterinary medicine or nursing? Uh, only on the ground experience. I was four years in a clinic. So, um, you don't have any experience with um, medical training for humans, right? No. And um, you don't have any training in healthcare, correct? Could you be more specific? You don't have any training in healthcare for people, correct? I'm not, a nurse, I'm not a human nurse, if that's your question. I don't really understand your question. Sorry, you don't have any training related to prescription drugs, do you? No. And um, you have no only, basis? Excuse me, only pertaining to animals. Yes, I would like to add that. Uh, okay, and that, that was the training that you received on the job in Australia before you came to the U.S.? Amongst other things, yeah. Um, you, you familiar with um, Ms. Heard um, taking prescriptions for Accutane and ProVigil, among other things, correct? Yes. Yeah. You are not, um, you never served as a nurse or a doctor to Ms. Heard, right? No. And you have uh, no medical knowledge um, to testify whether uh, Ms. Heard used ProVigil or Accutane in the way her doctors instructed, correct? 
No. And you're not an expert on the interaction of prescription drugs and alcohol or other drugs, correct? No. course of your employment develop any personal knowledge of um, Mr. Depp's use of alcohol or drugs? Not first hand. And what do you mean by not first hand? Well, I worked with Amber. I didn't work with him. Did you ever see Mr. Depp um, using illegal drugs? No. Did you ever see Mr. Depp um, abuse alcohol? No. Did you ever speak with Dr. Kipper? No. Did you ever speak with Aaron Borum? Yes. And, and Aaron Borum was a nurse who worked for Dr. Kipper, right? She was assigned to Amber. That's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She, she was assigned to Amber. That's how I came to be speaking to her. And she also provided medical services to Johnny, right? I, I don't know. What do you recall speaking to Aaron Borum about? Just random chit chat in the course of the day, nothing specific. Do you recall ever forming any concern in your own mind about any of Mr. Depp's behavior in his relationship with Amber? Never. Nothing you heard, nothing you witnessed, nothing you saw during your time with Mr. Depp ever gave you an inkling of concern about Mr. Depp's behavior toward Amber? Never. Now, you um, you left your employment. Your your employment with Amber ended in early 2015, correct? Yeah, just after they came back from the wedding on the island. Did Miss Heard terminate your employment? When Miss Heard came back from the island, she informed me that she now needed to support her mother because her mother could no longer work after a diagnosis, a medical diagnosis, and she told me she could no longer afford to pay me since she had to support her mother, and therefore she would have to terminate my employment to support her family. And did you resent Miss Heard for that, for terminating your employment? It would have been nice to have been given some notice, so I had some time to look around. Uh, so I was a little upset for the lack of notice. But apart from that, no, I was not upset. Ms. Heard gave you six weeks of severance pay, correct? I don't recall. Did you want to stay in the job for Ms. Heard? Well, I did ask if I could have a few months heads up so I could seek another job that would suit the terms of my employment, but she did not allow that. And that made you angry, correct? No. Did, did you ask to be put on Mr. Depp's payroll so that you could remain uh, being paid by Ms. Heard or Mr. Depp? Well, when she said she couldn't afford I said, now you're married, couldn't I go on to uh, Depp's payroll? And she said, no, it was part of a legal agreement they had that she was not allowed to do that. I don't know whether that was true or not. You ever asked Mr. Depp whether you could go on his payroll? No. Isn't, isn't it true that you asked to um, live in one of Mr. Depp's houses rent free for a period of time after your employment? Well, you see, I'm a homeowner, and but I want to be clear. I didn't want to miss a mortgage payment due to unemployment. So my idea was is perhaps I could find an alternate accommodation in order to rent out my house so I don't lose my entire property. I'm a homeowner. Keeping my home and my payments up to date is the paramount importance to me.
All right, fascinating testimony, even though it's via video. Kate James on the stand. We're going to push the pause button. I want to thank Andrew Mishlove. We'll get you back into court right after this. After a break, stay with us. 4-9 now. They are. Welcome back to Court TV Live Testimony. Continues in the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard defamation trial, and it's a classic case of he said, she said. The attorney's former ex-wife Amber Heard uh, are painting a picture of an alcohol-induced abuse scenario, and Depp's attorneys are claiming the entire thing was made up. Depp is suing Heard for $50 million in damages after an op-ed piece she wrote in the Washington Post. Right now, the jury is hearing a video deposition from Katherine James. She's Amber Heard's former personal assistant. Let's get you back into court right where we left off. You skipped about a year and a half of mortgage payments on your home during the time you were employed by Ms. Heard. No. Let's pull up the document ending in ALH 5858, please. So oh. exhibit 11 on the screen. Yeah, I think I can. I think you've read everything. Um, so if you're if you're ready to, for me to ask you questions, my first question is just: Is this an email exchange between you and Amber relating to the termination of your employment? Yeah, this is the email I received when she terminated me. And then the emails above it in this document are some of which are duplicated. Are an email exchange that you had with Amber um, after you received the termination email. Yeah, when I woke up that morning, yeah. Um, can you go to the first page, please? Top of the document. Mm-hmm. Um, isn't it true that Miss Heard did pay you six extra weeks of pay after your termination? She's stating that, but I don't recall if it actually happened or not. You don't have personal knowledge one way or the other or a recollection of whether she did? No. Um, and you, isn't it true that you, you do tell her in this email that you didn't pay your mortgage for the first year and a half that you were working for her? Yes, right? I had one of those balloon mortgages, so I had to go through a loan modification. And I recall now that that's why I was able to agree to work for her for such a small amount of money than what I normally made. It was sort of as a, a favor almost. What, what was a favor? work for her for like half my usual paycheck basically so you're you, you were doing amber a favor yes because initially it was described as a part-time 20 hour a week thing with flexibility and blah 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 so you know i thought it's not really in my caliber but my son was only four at the time so it seemed like a good idea especially because i wasn't paying my mortgage so i could take the hit by getting ex less pay than i would normally make and that way I could also have the time with my son that I wanted. Are you, and I, I think the answer to this is no, but I just want to be clear. You're not blaming Amber for you're not paying your mortgage, right? No, that was my choice. It, it was the only way I could get a loan modification. It was the way it was. Do you know the 2008 crash? That's how it worked back then. If you wanted to save property. Well, and and well, you started working for Amber in 2012, right? Yes, it took a long time, the loan modification process. And and you're not blaming Amber for getting a credit card with 29% interest, are you? What? You, you see in your email on that first page, um, about two thirds of the way down, you say, I have borrowed from my mom, my tenant security deposit, and now I have used up a credit oh. card I should use as it has 29% interest. Oh, that's my choice. Did you have tenants in your property at that time? Um, I have a duplex. I'm just trying. And that time, yes, I had tenants in one house and I was living in the other. Did you use those tenants' security deposit for personal expenses? I don't remember. Do you see where you say, I have borrowed from my mom my tenants' security deposit? Does mm -hmm. Do, do you recall using your tenant security deposit or, or borrowing from that? It's too long ago for me to recall if it actually happened. Would there be a reason that you would have said that if it wasn't true? No. And um, isn't it true that you did ask to live rent-free um, in one of 
Johnny's houses after you were terminated, right? Lots of people did. And isn't it true that you did? Yes. And did that ever come to pass? No. Did it make you angry that that didn't happen? No. It's fair to say at the time that your employment was terminated, you were in fairly significant financial trouble, correct? Yes. And you were angry with Amber for terminating you at this time when you were in financial trouble, correct? No. See at the bottom of your email on page two, you say, Max and I love you very much as a the sign off to your email. Yes. And Max is your son, right? Yes. That wasn't true, correct? In fact, you, you, you didn't love Amber. You didn't like her, did you? Um, any close relationship has ebbs and flows in the energy that you feel towards one another. It's pretty standard. And at that point in time, you, um, well, since your termination, you've had nothing but animosity toward Miss Heard, correct? No, I actually bumped into her at the P.O. box about three months after, and she was in her Range Rover, and I saw her sister and she said come say hi to Amber and I went back there and I was going to say hi but she was on the phone and she was saying wait wait but then I had to go that's the only time I've ever seen her but I, w I wanted to go and say hi I wasn't feeling like I wanted to avoid her or anything you know things things happen and life goes on you know I understand you're a personal assistant Miss James what type of people do you work for uh, high profile celebrities. Are they celebrities in the entertainment industry? Yes. You previously testified that in March of 2012, you worked as a personal assistant for Miss Heard. Yes? Yes. In total, how long did you work for Miss Heard as her personal assistant? Uh, almost three years. And at the time you were hired in March of 2012, had you ever heard of Miss Heard? No. You previously testified today that at some point while working for Ms. Heard, you transitioned from working part-time to full-time. Is that right? Yeah. Mm hmm When did that transition happen? I don't recall specifically. You think it happened within the first year of your employment? I believe it happened within the uh, around six months into the employment. So most definitely it happened in the first year of your employment. Is that correct? Yes. You really tes testified that you stopped working for Ms. Heard as her personal assistant in February of 2015. Is that right? Yes. And you also testified that Ms. Heard let you go upon her return from the Bahamas in February of 2015. Yes? Yes. Did Ms. Heard ever give you any indication or warning that your employment might end upon her marriage to Mr. Depp? No. How did it make you feel when Ms. Heard terminated your employment without warning? A bit of a shock, a bit of a feeling of being blindsided. When you first began working for... Looks like some technical issues there uh, with the uh, feed from um, the courtroom. And so let's bring in Maria Barlow in Chicago. This um, witness, Maria, is um, she's interesting and uh, unique. Oh, you know, they fixed the technical issues. Let's go back in felt insecure about her relationship. Is that correct? Yes. Can you expand on that? What do you mean by that? He didn't like being away from his physical presence. Did she, Ms. Heard tell you that she felt insecure when Mr. Depp wouldn't be present with her? 
Other than telling you she felt insecure about her relationship with Mr. Depp, what else did Ms. Hurd say about feeling insecure? She told me she didn't like hanging out in his house with his friends because it, it was boring and they were all old men playing guitars and it wasn't interesting to her. Was Miss Heard dating Mr. Depp when you first started working for her? Yes. When did you first learn that Miss Heard was dating Mr. Depp? After uh, about a month, I think. How did you learn that she was dating Mr. Depp? She told me. What did she tell you? She. She told me she was dating Johnny Depp. Do you recall the first time you met Mr. Depp? Yes. When was that? It was in her apartment on Orange. Probably shortly after she told me she was dating him. He was standing in the dining room. And approximately when was that? I don't remember. I would say um, April, um, April or May of 2012. What was your impression of Mr. Depp? He was very peaceful, very calm, almost shy and uh, very quiet. And uh, I remember he was wearing red red suede shoes because I didn't know where else to look. I looked at his shoes. It was like a, <laughs> it's a weird recollection, I know. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Did you ever witness Mr. Depp be rude to anyone? He's such a gentleman. He's so he's like a total southern gentleman. So no. no. Did you ever see Mr. Depp? loses cool. No. Did you ever see him scream at anyone? No. Did you ever see him break something? Only in a video. In your presence, did no. you ever see Mr. Depp break something intentionally? Never break anything, never throw anything, always completely passive. I believe you've testified previously, but you have a son, correct? Yes. How old was your son when you first started working for Ms. Heard? Four, four years old. And did you ever bring your son to work with you? Yes. How often? Uh, quite often, if I had to keep working, I would bring him back there after school. And if I had to work on the weekends, he would come with me then. Did Mr. Depp ever interact with your son? Yes, he was very kind. How often did you did Mr. Depp interact with your son? Whenever they were in each other's presence. Can you give me an estimate of how often that happened? Oh, countless times. Uh, he would he would even teach him how to play guitar. He brought him back from vacations. Uh, he showed him his amazing makeup makeover when he was uh, doing black mass. He tricked him. He leant over and was saying, do you know who I am? And the full makeup on his son's jaw almost hit the ground. It was really cute, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gave my son a, a little um, pick as well, a guitar pick, which he cherishes to this day as well. Fair to say you were around Mr. Depp and, and Ms. Heard together quite a, quite a lot? Yeah, it, be, it became increasingly more as the time went on, yeah. What was your impression of Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp's relationship? Uh, you know, it, was, it, it did not seem like a perfect relationship to me based on a lot of insecurity on her behalf, um, which seemed to cause uh, confusion in the relationship. Um, uh, maybe the age gap was an issue because of their interests. I know that much. Apart from that, who am I to know the relationship, you know?
do you think that Mr. Depp was smothering of Ms. Heard? Um, yeah. Did it did it appear to you that Mr. Depp was jealous of Ms. Heard? No. Did you ever have interactions with Mr. Depp by yourself? Um, sometimes, yeah. And what were those interactions like? This friendly chit chat, which would stop immediately when Amber saw me speaking to him, she'd give me the evil eye and I'd know to just quickly walk away. Did Amber ever talk to you about your interactions with Mr. Depp? No. In the three years that you worked for Ms. Hurd, did you ever see Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp argue? No. All right, we need to slip in a quick break. More testimony right after this. Stay with us. <laughs> Well, that testimony continues in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation civil trial right now. The jury is hearing a video deposition from Catherine James, Amber Heard's former personal assistant. Let's get you back in right where we left off. Physical violence between Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp. Never. Did you ever see either of them being physically aggressive with one another? No. Did you ever see any property damage at Ms. Hurd's home? No, sir. Did you ever see any property damage at Mr. Depp's primary residence on Sweetser? No, sir. Did you ever see any property damage at the lofts or the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia building? No, no never. Over the three-year period in which you worked for Ms. Heard, did you ever hear from anyone that Mr. Depp or Ms. Heard had been in a physical alteration, altercation? No. Over the three-year period in which you worked for Ms. Heard, did you ever see Ms. Heard be physically aggressive with anyone? No. Let's break that down a bit. When you say she was verbally abusive to you regularly, yeah. Can you explain to me how she was verbally abusive to you? Screaming, uh, screaming over the phone. She screamed at me once in person, multiple times screaming at me over the phone. Barrages of abusive um, text messages, day and night, a lot of them in the middle of the night, I think you're aware. I think uh, uh, between 2 and 4 a.m. the barrage would start. That's what I'd wake up to. Um, all incoherent, not really making sense, just basically someone to lash out at, you know, no apparent reason to it. You testified previously that you observed Ms. Heard be verbally abusive to her sister. Yes. What do you recall about that? It was ongoing kick the dog kind of relationship with her sister. So it's really hard to pinpoint any specifics, but uh, yeah, uh, her poor sister was treated like the dog that you kick basically. You previously testified that Ms. Heard, you observed Ms. Heard be verbally abusive to her mother. Mm -hmm. What specifically did you observe? Well, there is a video that um, line where you can see her being abusive first and foremost so it's not even based on what i'm telling you it's what i've seen the interactions between the two of them when her mother was still alive and the fact that her mother was terrified of her did her mother did tell she you she was terrified of her she personally told me she was terrified of her did you ever witness miss heard tongue lash her mother here and there yes Especially when it was a build up to a stressful event or something like that, yeah. You 
said you felt that Ms. Hurd was verbally abusive to you. Can you provide me with any specific examples of this behavior? Well, I thought I did earlier, but yeah, it was just so random and ongoing. You would never know where, when it was going to come left of centre. Um, I do remember on one occasion when we were moving from part to full time and then the salary negotiations became a real bone of contention. And I specifically remember standing in her office where she leapt up out of her chair, put her face approx approximately four inches from my face. She was spitting in my face and it's telling me how dare I ask for the salary I was asking for, which was in fact approximately half of my regular annual salary. I was offering her that as a favour and she felt she felt that gave her the right to spit in my face. And there was a witness in the apartment at that time, by the way. Who was at the apartment at the time? The handyman, Hector Galindo. I'm sorry? The handyman, Hector Galindo. He was so he was so mortified. He was so embarrassed to hear her speaking to me like that. Miss James, while you worked for Miss Hurd, did you ever observe her drinking alcohol? Yes, I did. How often did you observe Miss Hurd drink alcohol? Don't recall. What alcohol did you observe Ms. Hurd drink in your presence? Red wine. Did Ms. Hurd ever appear intoxicated to you? Yes, she often did. While you worked for Ms. Hurd, were you aware of what, if any, prescription drugs she was taking? Yes, because I had to pick it up and I often had to deliver it to her. To you set. anticipated. I'm sorry, Ms. James, I interrupted your question, or your answer, excuse me. The last part of your answer was to... I would, I, it was my job to pick it up and deliver it to her, also bring it to her if she was doing a photo shoot or, uh, you know, on set or something, if she'd forgotten it. What prescription drugs do you remember picking up from Ms. Hurd? Provigil. Any other prescription drugs that you remember picking up from Ms. Hurd? Accutane. Any others? Not specifically. To your knowledge, did Ms. Hurd ever stop taking Provigil or Accutane while you were working for her? No. Let's get a quick break in here. We'll pick it up right where we left off. Stay with us. 100. Let's get you back right where we left off. The former personal assistant is on the stand. Catherine James is her name. And again, we're going to pick it up right where we left off. Stay with us. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she had, was experiencing any side effects from Provisual? She didn't say it, but I observed it. We'll go back to that in a minute. but. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she was experiencing any side effects from Accutane? No. You previously testified that you observed Ms. Hurd having certain side effects from Provisual. Yes? Yes. What side effects did you observe Ms. Hurd exhibiting? Manic episodes. Can you tell me what you mean by manic episodes? Similar to if someone was on some sort of amphetamine drug. Moving very fast, uh, not making a lot of sense, 
hyper organizing, hyper tasking, just very, very uh, hyper. Yeah. Besides prescribed medication, did you ever observe Ms. Hurd ingest any illicit drugs while you worked for her? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she had ingested illegal drugs? Yes. When did Ms. Hurd tell you that she had ingested illegal drugs? Um, sporadically here and there. What drugs did Ms. Hurd tell you she had ingested? Mushrooms, ecstasy, and cocaine. If you remember, how many times did Ms. Hurd tell you that she had ingested illegal drugs? I can't remember. Based on your personal observations, did it ever appear to you that Ms. Hurd was under the influence of illegal drugs? Yes. How many times? Uh, I, I don't know. Less than five? It's so long ago, it's hard for me to remember. Why did you... Why did it appear to you that Ms. Hurd was under the influence of illegal drugs? Disoriented, partying with friends, um, lots of heavy drinking, laughing, dancing, playing, all the sorts of things that go hand in hand with uh, imbibing in drugs. Would Ms. Hurd's treatment of you change when she was intoxicated? Yes. How so? She became more and more belligerent and abusive. Ms. James, you previously testified that you provided testimony in a matter involving Mr. Depp in the United Kingdom. Do you remember that testimony? Mm -hmm. Yep. And how did you provide testimony in the United Kingdom? Uh, well, I wrote a witness statement and then I had to do a live video feed. And did you understand that your witness statement was made under oath? Yes. And did you understand that your testimony during the trial live was also under oath? Yes. Did anyone help you write your witness statement? Uh, Shillings over in the UK uh, helped me with the first draft and then I took over and com completely edited it to be my own words. That was after a phone conversation we had. They jotted down notes, sent me some basic notes to work with, and then I worked on it from there. How long did it take you to write your witness statement? Um, about three or four days. Did you feel you had an adequate amount of time to prepare and write your witness statement? Yes, I was very proud with the outcome of how I wrote it because it was all my words and it was the absolute truth. And did you have enough time to review your witness statement for accuracy before you signed it? Yes. Was everything that was in your witness statement true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes. And is that still true today? Yes. Lucien, may I please have you pull up exhibit, DEP exhibit number four, please? Showing DEP exhibit number four on the screen. Thank you. Ms. James, do you remember receiving an email from Ms. Hurd on or about February 12, 2015? I don't even believe I was still working as a date. Do you remember receiving this email in particular from... February 12, 
again, I don't, as far as I know, I wasn't even working for her at that time, so I wouldn't even know why she wrote this letter to me, quite honestly. Do you remember receiving this email then? No. Okay. Can we please pull up exhibit number five? Samuel. Is it on screen? Lucy, may I ask you to? There you go. You read my mind. Lucy, may I either take control or have you scroll down to the bottom? Thank you. James, the way these emails tend to work is they, they start at the bottom. Yeah. And then go up. And this one is no exception. Right. So I'm going to, for your ease, I'm going to have you read the bottom email first, since it's the first one in the chain, dated February 3rd, 2015. Mm-hmm. Looks like she was travelling straight to London after the wedding. That's what it's, that's what I'm reading. Do you remember actually, you know what? Why don't you read this entire email chain and then I'm gonna ask you some questions about it. Okay, good time for a break. We'll get you in for more of the testimony from the former personal assistant. Boy, she has a lot to say right after this. 3200 now. Welcome back. We've been listening and watching, uh, we're listening to and watching a video deposition from Catherine James. She's the former assistant, personal assistant, to Amber Heard. Let's get you back right where we left off. Do you remember receiving these emails from Miss Heard? Not really, no. No. <clears throat> Do you see where Miss Heard on February 4th, 2015 writes in all caps, are there no direct flights? Question mark, question mark, exclamation. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing her to this top email, Mr. Rottenborn. Do you see where Miss Heard writes to you are there no direct flights in all caps? <laughs> you would agree with me that nowhere else in this email chain, Ms. Heard uses all caps to, to write to you, correct? No, there's not. She seems very confused. That's all I can say. When I'm reading through this, she just seems to be very confused. And the thing is, is um, like if that if that question were to be directed to anyone, it should have been to the travel agent, not me. I mean, I'm not the travel agent. The travel agent was down there in the beginning. Trudy Sullivan. Directing your attention, Miss James, to May of 2014, when you met. Ms. Heard at the Chateau Marmont in Los Angeles, California. Do you remember your testimony about that incident? You testified previously that she, that Ms. Heard asked you to bring a bathing suit to the hotel. Is that correct? Yes. Did you see Ms. Heard wearing a bathing suit in May of 2014 at the Chateau Marmont? Yes. Based on your recollection, did you see any bruises on Ms. Hurd's body? No. Did you see any red marks on Ms. Hurd's body? No. How would you describe the general atmosphere or mood of Ms. Hurd and her friends at the Chateau Marmont? Uh, to be honest, it seemed a little conspiratorial to me. 
wounds. How so? Like a strategy meeting or something and combined with a pool party, hard to describe. It was very confusing. I, originally, I thought I was going over for some major emergency, but then something else completely different was going on that day. What made you think something completely different was going on that day? Well, because originally it made it seem like she was having this major emergency and she was completely alone and she needed me very badly to come as quickly as possible. But when I got there, I, she was surrounded by people. Savannah, Io, Tillett Wright and Rocky specifically, Ra Raquel Pennington. What was the second name you said? I got Rocky and who? Io, Tillett Wright. It's the letter I, the letter O, Tillett Wright. Did you observe Ms. Hurd showing what appeared to be injuries to any of her friends at the chateau that day? No. Did it appear to you that Ms. Hurd's friends were con comforting her? How would you describe Ms. Hurd's friends' behavior? Friends hanging out together by the pool, having cocktails and spending the entire afternoon hanging around together. Did you ever um, did you ever learn information that made you believe that one of the reasons that their relationship uh, between Johnny and Amber wasn't, as you described, perfect was because of Johnny's substance abuse? I couldn't speculate on the details of their personal relationship. You did testify earlier that one of the reasons you thought their relationship was, wasn't perfect was insecurity on Amber's part though, right? Yes. So you, you developed an opinion that insecurity on Amber's part affected their relationship, but you did not develop an opinion that substance abuse or any actions by Johnny affected their relationship, is that right? That statement was based on communications directed to me from Amber, basically. What communications specifically? Expressing, uh, you know, exactly what I just stated, that she was sad, she didn't want to be away from him, blah, 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 that sort of thing. It would happen all the time. And um, you believe that those statements were the reason that their relationship wasn't perfect? It's not for me to speculate. You would agree that just because someone is insecure in a relationship does not mean that she deserves to be abused, correct? I have no answer for you for that. You would agree that even if someone acts quote unquote smothering in a relationship doesn't mean she deserves to be abused, correct? I don't have an answer for you for that. I don't have any further questions. Thank you for your time today. All right. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our morning recess for 15